listening to Phantasm Podcast, a horror death metal podcast for the old school. as they stuff horror movie reviews and death metal interviews all in one body bag. Listen on iTunes, subscribe on YouTube, and like on Facebook, and head over to OutlandMedia.net for more. This is Carl Willits from Memoriam, and you're listening to Phantasm Podcast. Phantasm. Christ Phantasm Podcast. I have the honor of speaking with Carl Willits of Memoriam. We're here to talk about Requiem for Mankind. Comes out June 21st on Nuclear Blast Records. Carl, how you doing, man? I'm doing very well, my friend. Very well indeed. Sitting here on a cold, damp, rainy night in Birmingham, England. Uh, very cool. And, um, you know, you, you described that was like more of like a you know, your anthem track, but we'll get to that. And also you have yeah. uh, 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 Shell Shock is also available. You got the lyric video for that up currently. Um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're the first two that have been uh, released as, uh, you know, video, lyric videos through, uh, through Nuclear Blast. And I think they give a good, a good taste of, of what people should anticipate and expect from the, uh, the new album, which, as you say, is being released... Uh, on the 21st, which is only a week away, yep. uh, less than a week away. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we're, we're very pleased with, um, with the new album. Obviously, uh, it's a big step forward for us in, in many uh, respects. It's uh, our third album in as many years. So we are uh, recording and writing and being creatively driven uh, yeah. at um, yeah, a, a very fast pace, uh, you know, kind of like... Uh, Album. I generally tend to find that happens with, with new bands when they get together. You, know, you, you do sure. work at a, at a fast pace, and you know, you've got all these ideas. And uh, you know, we spent quite a bit of time in our former bands not um, being that creative. You know, we kind of got, got to that point where our careers were, you know, new albums weren't going to be coming out. So it's great to have the opportunity to to actually get into the rehearsal room and, and work on new songs, and, and then get in the studio and. Uh, um, record them and get them out. We t- don't tend to dwell too much on it. You know, that's what we've done in the past. The past three albums, two albums previous to this one. Right. You know, we've got to record it and then we move forward. You know, we have we haven't dwelled. We move forward, write the next album, get it out. But it's like with this, this third album, um, you know, I think we're really, really, really happy with that. We've, we've yeah, we haven't really done anything majorly different on the, on this album from my perspective. You know, it, it's it's all the songwriting process is the same. The uh, the way we put songs together, um, you know, the way we deliver them in the studio and record them isn't, you know, massively different from, from what we did before. But what works so well, particularly with this new album, is the fact that we've this time around we, we decided to, uh, you know, get some help on board from a, a, you know, an executive producer. So we got, we went down to Russ Russell's studio, Parlour Studios in Kettering, and used his uh, facilities, which are absolutely fantastic. And of course. Um, his expertise is really the thing that's made the ma- the massive impact and the major difference into uh, the product that is a requiem for mankind. He was actively involved in the songwriting process from the very early stages when we knew we were going to be using him uh, when we first started to write the songs. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, a really yeah, a really early kind of embryonic demo stage. We we sent them over to, to Russ, so he got to listen to them, got to know the songs inside out, and had a good idea what he wanted to do with them, which thankfully aligned with what we wanted to do with them as well, obviously. And uh, so when we went to the studio to record it in, in February, it was a breeze, absolute pleasure to do it. It was a, a sheer, a joyful experience, and it went really, really smoothly. And 
yeah, we think with this album we have now created what we can safely say is the definitive memoriam sound and we're very happy with that you know we've been searching for that for the past two three years and we finally got to that point so we're we're at a good point that's awesome yeah and it, it's you know russ russell's got an amazing resume himself and um so you guys are working with him i was like man this is gonna be really good and uh yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's, he knows his stuff. You know, he's really kind of oh, yeah. specifically for, for the genre that we're involved in. You know, that old school death metal field. He really knows what he's doing. I mean, we wanted to work with him since we started, really, but because we've been working, you know, at such a fast pace, um, our schedules because he's a busy man, obviously, he's in high demand. Mm-hmm. Um, so our schedules never really aligned. But uh, this time around, we made sure it did. We um, and. <clears throat> We definitely, definitely, because we now we've got that blueprint that works so well. We definitely want to go back and for the next album we, we do, you know, the next time we do it, we definitely might ensure that our schedules align again, so we uh, we can get to use Parlor Studios and, and Russ again. But yeah, not just the fact that um, you know he, he knows what he's doing and he really helps. He's also a really nice bloke as well. So All right, yeah, that helps. Really, really helps as well. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, let's uh, let's jump right into this thing. If you do a track by track, if you don't care, we'll do Requiem for Mankind. We'll get to it. Yeah, okay. Yes. Um, so you want to go through and, and, and name the tracks, or, or what, how do you want to do this? Yeah, yeah, we'll just go track by track and just talk a little bit about them each, each one. We'll just go down the, the track list. Yeah, here. okay. So you can fire up there, because I can't remember what the lot, what the hell what the, <laughs> right. which way they go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, we mentioned this one. We'll start with Shell Shock, which uh, if uh, anyone yeah. listening here hasn't heard it yet, it's on YouTube. So we check it out. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like a good place to start. Yeah. Obviously, that's the one that's out there, for, and everyone's probably heard or seen that uh, so far. I think that's a really good. It was a good starting point for us to uh, to put that one out first because it does really um, give people a really good idea of what what to generally. Uh, anticipate with the album. It's a very straightforward um, song. Yeah, very heavy. It, it, kind of, it demonstrates the um, the epic style of production that uh, the Russes uh, yeah. achieved for us in, in a very clear and def- definitive way. Um, yeah, lyric wise, it's, it's from my old standard stock um, <laughs> you know, safety zone songs about war. You know, um, right. what I'm known for. That's that's what I've been writing lyrics for the past thirty years about. Right. So, you know, um, this is one of the, the many lyrical themes that I ex- that explore with Memoria. I'm not just tied to that one theme anymore, which is absolutely uh, liberating. Yeah, it's um, a... free, <laughs> right about, you know, what. But, yeah, we, this, this was our first one, first art track on the album, Shell Shock. Very much all about the uh, the effects of uh, Shell Shock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it right. It does what it said on the down. You know, it's about the First World War. And yeah, they're suffering from the effects of what we now recognise as PTSD. Um, but the irony of it back then, it was yeah thought to be cowardice and um, dealt with in a, in a particularly strong way by you end up being shot by members of your own battalion. So um, that was quite it's quite a savage um, way of, of dealing with that situation and shows how, how the world was back then a very different place to how it is now in many ways. But. Uh, Similar in many respects, also, but yeah, it's, it's a straightforward song about war, nice and easy for the listener to get into and get a feel of what Memoriam is all about from that one. It's awesome, yeah, and it's a good way to start. It's a heavy ass track to, to start the album off for sure. Um, number two, Undefeated. Undefeated, yeah, oh wow, that, this is a special song to me. This is really, um, it's our anthem. In many respects, it's definitely a sh- quite short. It's one of the shorter songs on the on the uh, the album, and it's quite punchy. It's got a kind of bit of a you know a fist banging kind of sing along kind of like anthemic feel to it. Really, um, yeah, the, the lyrics are all about how us really. I think a lot of people. It's quite personal. Uh, it's about getting on with life and and uh, you know taking. All the ups and downs, and, and, and dealing with it. I think it's something that everyone can relate to in many respects. You know, every, we all have our these different experiences of uh, in our lives of loss and 
mourning and sorrow and you know, relationships breaking down and, and shit things happening to us. Right. Um, but it's really how you deal with it as a, as a person, you're, the way that you personally deal with it individually and how you deal with the issues that face you. I say we all have them. Uh, so it's how you deal with the issues that counts. And it really, how you come out the other end of those experiences, stronger, you know, wiser, um, that makes you who you are and you know it's, it's a statement of, of, of strength really um, and it's a statement really about us as, as, a, as a band as well that we've kind of been together for a long time and you know we've been through things in our lives and here we are still doing it you know still enjoying it still having a great time and we are undefeated hell yeah that's what I like to hear and that's you know <laughs> one of those songs too that you know anyone can relate to that's very uh you know, it's a very powerful thing as far as music and everything. Yeah, so. yeah, I think I think that's what's, that's the strength of that song. It's a <clears throat> narrative that um, yeah, that, that people can understand and people can relate to in many respects. So it, it might kind of like you know, kind of yeah, people might get some good personal uh, empowerment, uh, empowerment out of it as well. That's really what that songs are all about as well. It's a song about being being yourself and sticking true to yourself and, and being proud of who you are, and who, you know, whoever you are, whatever you are. Uh, being proud of that, and being strong. Absolutely. Um, number three, never the victim. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, yes, that's um, interesting song. That, one. that was that was probably the first song that we kind of put together for the album. Oh, okay. Again, that, this kind of for, for, follows a similar kind of uh, theme lyrically. I can't really talk too much about the music because I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just a vocalist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. We don't use them very often. Yeah, you know, we only use them when we feel that uh, it's needed. And um, yeah, there's a nice epic lead in that one, which really kind of makes it a little bit different from the other songs. Um, but again, it follows on for the same kind of theme as as defeated in many many ways. It's it's all about um, you know relationship breakdowns and, and um, escaping from from different situations in our lives you know domestic abuse you know can relate yeah. to that you know rape things like that you know can really like, can relate to, I think a lot of people can draw their own draw, draw their own personal experiences through that and it's really about as I said previously about the other song it's about it's a song of empowerment basically it's a song about you know surviving and um, getting through these experiences of our we, in life and it's particularly it was drawn that song in particular has been drawn on you know, my own personal experiences of you know, relationship breakdowns, but also in the past couple of years, I've seen a few of my close friends um, experience right. this kind of heartache and, and um, you know, seeing them kind of like go through these experiences was the thing that kind of like drove me to write these lyrics for them, really, in many respects as well. I think they, they, they can see that in the songs. And um, if it gives them some strength, you know, it's all about taking that strength and, and you know, you will live again. You know, life, life does move on, and uh, whatever experiences you have, you know, you do get over it. Even if it seems really dark at that point in time, um, it does get better, and life does move on, and we learn and we become better human beings through those experiences. Usually, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> don't really agree, though. Yeah. So yeah, so that follows the theme of empowerment on that one. Particularly like that song as well. I like them all, really. It's quite it's really yeah. hard to pull out one that's I think is the favourite. Uh, <laughs> uh, number four, Austerity Kills. Ah, yeah. Okay, that's that's um, that's more of a that's, that's our punk, our total punk song on the album. That's really kind of quite straightforward, um, and that's really another one that, that that's from my different um, different thematic uh, lyrically as well. That's that's what I call from my. Um, Political strand. <laughs> That's more of it. It's a straightforward song about the effect of austerity, and as it's a pretty much a song that, um, like Shao Trump does what it says on the tip. It spouts how the effects of austerity have had, um, you know, a crippling effect on particularly the uh, the weakest and most vulnerable members of our society. And right. um, you know, the uh, the irony it seems that the kind of the, the rich people in control seems to. Uh, to profit out of it, and the uh, those that are the poorest seem to kind of be in a, 
never-ending spiral of um, debt and, and poverty as a result of it, which you know has leads to you know health issues, which ultimately they lead to death, the suicide rates rising, things like that. So yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a finger pointing at the uh, prospective governments that are in control that have caused this effect of austerity over the last 10, 20, 30 years. Um, and of course, in my opinion, I've got blood on their hands as a result of it. Exactly, yeah. We all need uh, tracks like that as, uh, you know, these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it. That's that we've been more I've got that. Yeah, you know, for thirty years, was the lyrics predominantly about war. You know, there was there was always you know, an open interpretation to them. You know, and, sure. Uh, you know, I never wrote you know, as I said, when I was never really wrote about the blood, guts, and glory of war. It was all about the psychological aspects of it. And, you know, yeah. The individual um, different meanings to it, the way it affects people. You know, to, you know as a personal level. Um, but you know, with the more I have that this ability to create freedom to write about things that are have got more more direct meaning to me. You know, I've never been a soldier, I've never been in a, in a war, I've never fought in a battle. Whereas, right. you know, I kind of look around and I see the effects of austerity and it affects me as well, yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, it's my friends, my close friends, yeah, it affects, it affects them as well. Um, so it's great to actually be able to get a, get on my political soapbox as it is. Right. And you know, make some statements about things that I think are important um, and uh, are dangerous and, and, and are bad in the world that we live in. My musical heritage is from that old Anarcho UK grind punk uh, movement in the, in the mid to late eighties. You know, Discharge, yeah. Crass, all the kind of those, those kind of like punks that had a political message. You know, um, what well, anti-political <clears throat> message <laughs> and. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's where my heritage lies. So for me to have that ability at this point in my life to get out there and say some things about the world um, that I don't think is good and, and for me to get those ideas out is, is, a, is a really kind of like a great experience for me to be able to do that and I'm very, very um, privileged to be able to be in a position to do that as well. So, uh, so yeah, so that's... that's um, austerity Kills is all about... Uh, it's a political song about the effects of austerity. It's awesome. Um, number five in the midst of desolation. Yeah. Okay. That's this is it's an interesting one. This one difficult one to play live. Um, it's got quite a few layered uh, guitars. It's, again, this is another one of the themes of following the, the, the theme of which goes throughout the memorial. Yeah, the process of death, which is reflected. In the uh, in the artwork as well, uh, right. the flow of the, uh, the, the conceptual um, values of each album as well, kind of experience and, and follow the, the journey through that uh, that, that grieving mourning process. Uh, and, and this one is the um, really kind of like um, express, expressing gr- the ideas of grief. Mm-hmm. I particularly like this one throughout my kind of like career. There's there's, there's a, a poem, okay, by. Uh, Lawrence Bignon called For the Fallen um, which you know I have rampantly pillaged uh, yeah. <laughs> in the past few years you know leading back in from the old bomb thrower days you know they yeah. grown old as we that I left grow old that is from that poem and oh, you know, wow. the first memoriam album I've taken and taken another um, verse out of that uh, out of that poem on the second album I used another verse out of that uh, poem and on this album I've used another verse out of that poem <laughs> and that that features in this song so it's not an ongoing thing for me it's a thing that links things together which I kind of always like to do that you know, kind of thing, you know I like that yeah that. Like, yeah it, kind of, it gives it some kind of like longevity and some pace and reference you know and links things together nicely as well so uh, yeah. so yeah that's one for people to watch out for it's um, Yes, yeah, towards the end of the song, that uh, that's the, the verse out of uh, "For the Fallen" by Lawrence Binion. It's a beautiful poem. I love uh, that. So yeah, I'm very proud of that one. And that, again, that follows the uh, the process of, of grieving and and sorrow and mourning, which is very much in line with what Memoriam is all about. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, number six, refuse to be led. Okay. Yeah, again, this is. Um, Back on the old political uh, soapbox here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so again, this one is um, 
this, the actual song title itself was directly stolen from um, <laughs> about a band, a band, a band called Fluck of Pink Indians, who were, you know, back in the late 80s, were very much on the, you know, the crass um, conflict, all that kind of anarcho punk scene. You know, uh, Flux Pinkins is one of those bands that are on that on those labels and in, in amongst there. And I used to see them quite a lot live. And um, you know, did some some great albums. And um, they do a song called Take Heed, um, which is all about the um, the way that the music business tried to kind of take over the punk independent punk scene and and uh, try and you know, cash in on it basically. Right. And um, you know, one of the lines out of there is is that uh, you know. The, in a nutshell, it says, you know, as long as some of us refuse to be led, um, you know, it will be okay. Yeah, punk will still survive, you know, as as well, metal, you know, in many respects. So, um, so yeah, I took that line, refuse to be led, that'd be a great um, title for a song. And really, the lyrical content of that, uh, that, um, that song, again, is, is political, it's, it's really about the effects of, specifically about Brexit here in the UK. Um, and the way that's kind of like uh, polarised our, our nation and, and divided it. Yeah, we are. I consider now the uh, the ununited kingdom, the disunited kingdom, and uh, yeah, very much in parallel to what's going on in your country as well. In America, we see some pretty much the same. We see right. the different polit- political um, ideologies. Um, Clashing, you know, uh, massively. There is there's a reference to the disunited states in the uh, in that song as well. And yeah, we see. I don't think I need to uh, pretty come show you, tell people where I come from on, on my uh, where my political right. ideology lies. I think it's fairly really obvious, really. But uh, but but yeah, it, it's it's a, it's a worrying worrying times that we live in, you know, and uh, the, the rise of uh, you know rampant right wing ideology. I feel is a is a very scary thing, and it feels that uh, the platform for them is getting bigger, and they're getting braver, and um, you know, something needs to be done about it. You know, and I'm I'm quite happy to kind of raise my head above the parapet and say something about it, which needs to be done. You know, if I didn't do that, if I buried my head in the sand, if I went along with the lines of, you know, like many people say, you know, that uh, oh, there's no place for politics in music. Um, well, I think that's bullshit. You know, I think that the yeah. music that inspires me, or has motivated me, or wanted to me to to be into music, has got a political edge to it. Has got some meaning to it, and right. and kind of has a message that that, that, uh, that you know, there's this place for all types of music. You know, if you want to write songs about zombies and whatever, <laughs> fine, you know, but that doesn't really move me. You know, I, I like I like to hear stuff about that that has some some message to it that means something. So. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I'm doing on that one. That's a, that's a song directly about the uh, what I see is wrong in the world, specifically about Brexit and the rise of the uh, nationalist, xenophobic culture of fear that seems to be uh, a disease spreading across the globe at the moment. And uh, he's, you know, fire. He's, he's fed by the the, uh, the right wing media and the politicians that are in charge of our powerful countries are not helping it in any way so um, there you go that's, that's enough of my uh, political agenda <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that one about. yeah uh, uh, I appreciate that one and also I think music is one of the most powerful tools for uh, revolution and for people uh, waking up and really understanding things you know absolutely yeah. it, it kind of yeah, it's it's a um, it's a thing that kind of can communicate, communicates a kind of like a unity uh, and a shared ideals across across the globe as well. So you know, it means it's a, it's a powerful tool to Definitely. to be used, you know, in the right way. You know, you can also be see and you can see it being used in that in a very negative way as well in many respects. But uh, sure. I'm not here to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll move on. Number seven, the veteran. Yes, I think maybe at this point that's one of my favourite songs. On the other, that, this song is, it's a strange one because you know you, hear, you you read the song title of the veteran, you think, oh, that's going to be about you know the glorious soldier that's got you know right. fought in wars and has got medals and tales of glory, but it's not. 
it's inspired by the simple fact of looking on the streets, looking any major city in any, any country in, in, in the world, you know, the amount of homeless people uh, that are kind of living on the streets seems to be growing each year. Every time I go there, there's more people tend to be you know, homeless and, and living on the street because, because the effects of austerity and poverty and you know, all sorts of different things, you know, addiction and, and things, there just doesn't seem to be um, anything there to help people. You know, some, there, there's a lot of problems and there problems behind a lot of them. But you find that you know, a large percentage of um, these homeless people are ex-military services. Yeah. And um, I think that's, that's a really kind of alarming uh, thing to behold. And the song itself kind of is a weird one because it's, diff- it's got a kind of Pantera kind of um, riff going through it, which is a bit odd for, for yeah, a bit different for us really. And uh, but um, the, the, the lyrics came from the last line, which are a message to the government honour the military covenant. So I feel that yeah, these people, these ex forces, are being you know being let down basically. They've kind of gone out there to do tours of duty, uh, yeah, in Iraq, Iran, wherever you know, and witnessed horrors that you, know, you and I could never imagine, you know, and experienced it, and experienced, you know, oh, yeah, terrible things, yeah. And then they seem to come home and try to reintegrate with um, society, and many of them, due to the experiences, just can't do that. And there doesn't seem to be much of a network right. uh, to support them. Yeah, and the suicide rate amongst ex service members is, is, you know, is, is really high as well, which is ridiculous, you know. And, uh, so that was really kind of a song about about uh, the failure of the government to support ex service and um, it was a difficult one to, to write because yeah, I didn't want to write it in a way that was patronising. You know, I wanted to write it in a way that was sincere. So, so it's difficult to write, but it's it's come across really well. It's one of the strongest uh, songs that I've lyrically I, I've ever written. I think, and um, I'm very proud of it. In fact, we've, we've just I've just seen the final cut of. A video we've put together for this, which should be coming out in about two or three weeks, at the end of June sometime. Awesome. Um, which has been done by um, an ex-serviceman, so he's used a lot of his personal footage. Uh, it's a very personal video, uh, and it, it grounds it at the beginning. So, it's, you know, it's done from his own experience. So he uses a lot of the, the body cam footage from his tours of duty in Iraq. So there's a lot of you know action in there, which is you know, never been seen before. It's his footage. And then it deals with he suffered the effects of PTSD from this, and it goes through his experiences coming back to civilian life, his experiences in hospital, and the way that he's documented his coping strategies for dealing with, with the issue as well. So it's a very personal video, and um, yeah, so that's going to be coming out in uh, in a three or four weeks' time. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what kind of reception that gets from from the general public out there. But uh, I'm very proud of that, uh, and we can. You know, say things to make a difference. Hopefully, you know, make raise awareness about you know the the fact that these uh, these veterans do need help. Definitely, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to that. That sounds amazing. Um, when we get to the title track here, the Requiem the for Mankind. Title track. Yes, the title track, Requiem for Mankind. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's really a statement, isn't it? Really. It's a, statement of um, where we're at in life from my in my opinion you know it, it's following on from the you know I mentioned the trilogy the idea of a tri- trilogy we have for the three albums we've released so far so the, the first one for the forum was very much a um, the first phase where the, the, you know, the, the, the initial phase of loss uh, where the, the funeral procession where the bodies paraded across the uh, ravaged battle battle scarred Landscape, and that, that's the uh, yeah, the opening album art- artistically as well. And the second album is more of a, the lying is the silent vigil, you know, it's where you the, the lying in state of the body and the, the paying re- re- reverence and the, the kind of coming to terms with the whole uh, experience of grief. Um, and then the third album is, is the final phase, really, where the body is, is uh, you know, committed to the ground and the, the burial process, which which features on the album cover as well. So that that's really what that song's about. But it also is a statement about the world that we live in, of course, you know, as well. So it's a, it's a song 
are really about the ultimate downfall of mankind, which is a kind of lyrical theme that I've used for the past 30 years. Nothing really a lot's changed. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But at, at this point in time, it just feels that... Uh, it just feels a little bit more in your face, you know, with, with, with everything that's going on in the planet around us right now. I just feel that uh, the, uh, the tipping point is with us right now. So, uh, yeah, it's a statement about global affairs, whether it be social, political, economic, environmental. It's, it's about where we're at with society right now at this point in time. Awesome. And uh, number, yeah. <laughs> number nine, yeah. fixed bayonets. Fixed bayonets. Love the track. Yes, love love that. that. Yes. Uh, got a bit of a killing kind of joke vibe going to it. A bit of a kind of hypnotic kind of repetitive kind of feel to it, which I really, really like. And uh, that's why I've used the phrase fixed bayonets throughout the song on a regular basis. Yeah, and that, that again, going back and closing with the, uh, the old military war theme, it's basically just about the brutal savagery of hand-to-hand combat, and uh, that's, in a nutshell, what that song's about. It's straightforward, in your face, and a good, good way to end the album, you know, similar, in a way, to how we started it. So it flows really well together. Each song on the album kind of knits really well together, and, and, it, and the whole flow of it and the structure of it is very consistent throughout uh, Requiem for Mankind. And of course, the last one is the instrumental internment, which is, you know, we we're, we're gonna we always play that at the end of our set. It's well, we will be doing from now on in here. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the new, that's the new end to our set. And yeah, it's just a very nice way to close the uh, the trilogy of three albums that we put together. So it kind of completes the the, the actual kind of the, the the series of the three albums um, in quite a nice special way. It's very morose sounding funeral dirge and uh, yeah it closes it well it's awesome and that completes our uh, track by track here I'm so excited for this album to come out it actually comes out uh, this Friday June 21st yeah um, yeah we've, we've got to uh, we've got to learn we play a gig next Saturday and have a <laughs> party so it's great it's going to the, 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 uh, the studio recording all these songs and but now we've got to learn to play them live so <laughs> yeah we've got a week We've got a week to do it in. It's awesome. We're we're, we're, we're rehearsing, we know what we're doing. Uh, We're nearly there. But yeah, we're looking forward to playing in London, doing an album release party uh, and gig next Saturday, the day after it's released. uh, With uh, Underworld Camden. Yeah. And then uh, you got some other festival dates coming up in July. Yeah, yeah, we've got got, quite a few things probably not now, really. Quite busy. Yeah, I think because we've been. Yeah, we've been working really quite hard over the past three years. Yeah, as I said at the start of this interview, this, we've done three albums in, in three years. So I think right now, what we've got a lot of things we're going to do now is just, just stop a little bit. You know, just yeah. take take a bit of uh, take a breath and uh, appreciate what we've achieved in the past three years. You know, we've got a lot of material now, so uh, we're going to just enjoy the moment for what it is, and maybe not kind of concentrate or, or think about when we're going to record the next album which maybe leave it for a while then just enjoy what we've achieved up to this point and and just go out there and we've been, got lots of offers for shows coming up both for the end of this year and uh, going over into into uh, into next year a lot of offers coming through which is great to see and you know it's great so we, get, we pick and choose what we want to do on our terms we're never a band that's going to you know jump in a tour coach and go for a six to eight week, you know, tour, playing everywhere, oh, yeah, the, the, the arse end of nowhere to 30 people on a Tuesday night just doesn't really kind of hold any glory for me at this point in my life. We've kind of done all that in the past and it was great, you know, but I think as you get older, I think your priorities change a little bit, you know, and uh, yeah, we've got different responsibilities. We've got jobs, we've got kids, and other things outside of memoriam. So we did generally tend to do things on our terms and um, yeah we're still quite busy we, we still do you know four or five shows a month every other weekend we're away doing two or three shows so you know that, that, that's what you know, motivates us and that's what we enjoy doing so we'll be doing a lot of that over the next year definitely it's awesome yeah we look forward to that um, hopefully you make it over to the US 
one well, day or another. Well, it'd, nice. it'd be nice. We could get some offers. That's the thing that's stopping us from coming out, though, is the fact we haven't had any sensible offers. Because, yeah, logistically, right. you know, it, it's quite, you know, financially, it's very difficult, you know, for us to do that. So, yeah, so, um, right. you know, but, um, yeah, thanks because it all work, but I've got kids, so, so to get to, to come out of it would mean having to have two, three weeks away. And sure. I don't know. So it, it'd have to be the right offer at the right time. You know, for the, for the for the right price as well. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's important. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah. Um, I've been doing this for thirty years to come over and play for a bag of chips and a beer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, man, it's it's been great talking to you. I'm I'm so excited about this album coming out. I'm excited for Memoriam, and uh, you know, we we look forward to the to the record dropping and, and seeing what happens. You know. Excellent. Yeah, well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this evening. Oh, yeah. I think it's the afternoon where you are, but, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you, my friend. Thanks yeah. for your support and all your listeners out there as well. Thank you very much for, yeah, your support for, for Memoriam right now, but also over the past 30 years for supporting the, the music that, uh, that I've been involved with and, and being part of that history and legacy of what we've done. And, um, you know, I hope you, you enjoy our new album. I'm pretty sure you will do because it's pretty good. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Go out, play it, harass your local promoter, get them to make us come over and play. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the record and, and uh, I'll throw this up and, and get it to you. Find it out to us on Facebook and um, we'll share it and get it to some uh, out there to the, to the masses. Fuck yeah. Well, I look forward to it, man. And uh, thank you for everything and... and uh, Good yeah. Man. Thanks for your support, my friend. Thank you. Hey, you have a good one, man. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah. Take care, mate. Ta-da.